All right, guys. Uh, good to see you this morning. We are here. Guess who else is here? The Lord. Yes, he's always here. I'm here. You're here. The Lord's here. Here comes some more down the hall. Come on out, guys. Yeah, come on in. Okay, we're in the book of Proverbs. Amen. Yep, we've been there for quite a while, like all year. Uh huh. And so we're we're in chapter sixteen. We were all in Proverbs all last year too, if you remember. <clears throat> we'll see how long this goes. Proverbs chapter sixteen. I'm going to do two verses today. That's very unusual. In fact, I don't think I've ever done two verses before. But these verses go together really well. So I want to make sure we get them together. Okay. Here we go. This is God's word. Pride goes before destruction. You say, he's talking about pride again? Yeah, God underlines things by talking about it more than once. Pride goes before destruction. He could stop right there, but he has more to say. And a haughty spirit, which is a synonym for pride, before stumbling. And then in the next verse, he says, it's better to be humble. It's better to be humble in spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Now, we got to think about what all this means. You know what pride is, don't you? What, what, what do people act like or look like when they're full of pride? Um, what they, uh, uh, change your mind, don't want to answer. What, what do people act like or do or behave like when they're full of pride? They're full of themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They're full of themselves. They think they're better than everybody else, right? Yeah, they think they're better than everybody else. They think they're smart, smarter than everybody else. They think they're cooler than everybody else. They may think they're better looking than everybody else. They think they're better than everybody else. And maybe not everybody else, but better than a lot of people. You know, they're, they're stuck on themselves. Pride. God hates pride. What's humility? What's humility? What does he mean by being humble? What does that mean? What, as far as pride goes, what does it mean to be humble? Do you know? Uh, what? It means like to like, Thank you. That's exactly what it means. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It means you act like you're not better than everybody else. And, and, and you, you realize... I'm not very much. Now, be careful. You're very important to God. God's got, God wouldn't have created you. You wouldn't be here if God didn't have a purpose for you. And it's awesome. It's good. And you don't want to mess that up by ignoring him and say, I'm going to do it my way. You're going to mess it up. But if you say, Lord, I want to do it your way, that's being humble. When you say, Lord, I realize that apart from you, I can't do anything, that's being humble. With you, I can do anything you want me to do, but apart from you, I can't do a thing. That's being humble. Lord, I realize I'm no better than anybody else. That's being humble. That's what God wants you to do. So pride is thinking you're better than everybody else. Humility is the opposite. Got it? And what, what do you, you remember what he said happens? If you're proud, it goes before what? Do you remember? Do you remember the word? Anybody? Destruction. What's destruction? What? It's like where destroy stuff is not used, like how it Yeah, anytime something gets destroyed, you know what destroyed is. You've seen lots of movies where they destroy things. Yeah. Anytime something's destroyed, that's bad, right? It's, it's ruined. It's, it's undone. He says that's what pride leads to. It leads to you being destroyed. That's bad stuff, guys. You don't want to go there. And a haughty spirit before stumbling, that means you're going to fall down. It's better to be humble in spirit with the lowly then divide the spoil with the proud. What do you think? He's talking about when he says divide the spoil. Have you studied that in history? What does it mean to, to divide the spoil? What is the, what's the spoil? You know what he's talking about? Like, what do you think? Like, it's like a, uh, a spoil alert. Or like how it's been. I couldn't hear you. It could be like a spoil alert or something like that. Okay, yeah. It can mean that. Spoil has more than one meaning. We use the word a lot when food goes bad. It says spoiled, right? But in the Bible times, a lot of times what they would use the word spoil for is when people would come in and, and take over some other people, uh, they'd, they'd take their stuff, and they'd call that taking the spoil. You remember when Israel came out of Egypt, and God just basically destroyed Egypt with all those plagues? You remember that in the Old Testament, Exodus? 
Yeah, it, it said the Egyptians gave Israel their spoil. They gave them lots of jewelry and stuff like that when they left. They, they, they spoiled the Egyptians. That means they took their stuff. Well, that was very common. You know, a, a group of people, an army would come in, take over a city, and they'd conquer the city, and they'd take all their stuff. They call that the spoil. And, and there were people in those days who would, who would go in with other people, and they would rob people. And that's, they, they'd call that the spoil. They'd take over somebody's home or take over somebody's farm. They'd just take their stuff. They call that the spoil. And, and so you, the people who took spoil got rich because they had a lot of stuff for free coming in. They'd stolen it, but they got it. And God says, look, don't think about getting the spoil with the proud. That's, that's foolish. It's better to be humble. It's better to be low in spirit than to have a lot of stuff. You don't need a lot of stuff. You need a right relationship with God. Now, let me tell you something. I'm talk, I, I know I'm taking a little bit more time this morning, maybe, but I'm going to tell you something important. It's hard to conquer pride. Some of us learn how to act humble when we're not really humble. Do you know what I mean? If you can say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm no good. I can't do anything. And that sounds a little bit humble. It's not really. But a lot of times people act like that because they're hoping somebody will brag on them and say, oh, yeah, you're great. You're great. You can do so we got to find the balance here. Let me tell you where the balance is. The, the, the key to this, if you've ever studied this armor of God in my classes, is putting on the breastplate of righteousness. We come before God, we say, Lord, <clears throat> my righteousness, the Bible says, is like filthy rags. I don't have anything good to offer you, not really. You've got to do it through me. As I've got to have your righteousness. I need your forgiveness. I need your strength. I need your mercy. I need your grace. You work through me. And you give me your righteousness, and then I can do whatever you want me to do. I'll stay in this battle. I'll live for you. I'll glorify you. Because you're enabling me to do it. So God's going to give you the strength. So when you realize that everything good you do is him working through you, you won't be arrogant. You won't be proud. You won't be stuck on yourself. Because who will you be giving the glory to? Him. Yeah, you'll be giving the glory to him. You'll realize, God, you're the one doing the good stuff. Thank you for helping me do good on this test. Thank you for helping me do good when I played ball. Thank you for helping me do good at the church. Thank you for helping me do good when we did that drama. Lord, you're the one doing it, though. It's not me. Thank you for the way you made me look. Lord, it's your glory. You made me the way I am. I, I give you praise for it. He gets all the glory, you see. If you can learn to do that, instead of taking it for yourself, God says you, you've got a long way towards moving or making the right direction, moving in the right direction. Remember, he hates pride. And the way to conquer it is to say, Lord, I need your righteousness, the breastplate of your righteousness. Mine is filthy rags. Yours is everything. So I give all the credit to you, all the glory to you. Help me not to be proud. It's kind of a lifelong project. Anything you want to add before I pray? <clears throat> all right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for this new day. Thank you that we get to live it for you. Help us to remember what you taught us this morning. Help us to conquer pride. Lord, you know how easy it is for us to get stuck on ourselves, to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. And we pray you'd help us to conquer that with the breastplate of righteousness so that we'll recognize our righteousness. What we do that's good is not really worth a thing. But what you do through us is awesome. And so we give you all the praise, all the glory. And when you help us do good things, Lord, we want to be quick to remember that it's you working through us that we have nothing to be proud of. So, Lord, help us not to think more highly of ourselves. Help us not to get stuck on ourselves. Help us not to act like or think like. We're better than anybody else, Lord. We know that's a lie, and I pray you'd help us to conquer that tendency. Help us to focus on you, to give you glory today, to walk with you today, to let you bless us today, and to give you all the praise for those blessings today. Help us to give you lots of thanksgiving. Help us to get wisdom from you today to make good decisions. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Stay in the battle. Have a blessed day.